You're watching Happy Trails Hiking. And we're on a Rockies road trip. Let's go. In July of 2018, we took a trip up the American Rockies. Good morning. We are headed up to Pikes Peak this morning. The journey to the top of Pikes Peak is a challenging drive on steep grades. During our visit at the top of the mountain, we enjoyed high altitude donuts, a photo shoot with Bigfoot, and most importantly, we took in sweeping views of the area below the peak from within the clouds. We ended our day with beer and cheeseburgers at Manitou Brewing. The beer is good, but the cheeseburger and Parmesan truffle french fries will change your life. Good morning. Or whatever time it is when you see this, but it's morning here. The sun hasn't really even come up. But we're at Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Continuing our Rocky Mountain road trip, we are at Fluorescent Fossil Beds National Monument. We visited Colorado Mountain Brewing for a well-balanced dinner of beer, venison egg rolls, and bison pizza. Yep, it's as good as it looks. Kay and I are in Rocky Mountain National Park on the trail to Cub Lake. This trail is easy to access from nearby Moraine Campground. It's an easy hike on a well-maintained and beautiful path. So we're gonna go from east to west, uh, starting at Moraine Park Campground and headed clear over to the west side of the park. Long's Peak is the highest mountain in the park. 14,259 feet. It's named after Major Stephen H. Long. There's an interpretive trail here at Hidden Valley. And it looks like it's fairly well maintained in a wide gravel path. Mostly it's got this creek running through. And it's called Hidden Valley Creek. So this is our tent setup. This is our new friend. We tried to stay 25 yards away. She didn't listen. The Arapaho National Wildlife Refuge was an unplanned stop on our journey. We highly recommend it not only for its wildlife, but also because it is quiet and largely devoid of people. Kay and I are in Pinedale, Wyoming, and we're about to visit Wind River Brewing. Here we go. Alright, so what's your first one? Well, before we start tasting, I should tell you that this place has a unique feature on the menu in that you can get the bartender's choice in a flight of four beers. That is what we have done. You get your first glimpse. Welcome to the Grand Tetons. We finally got past all the crowds. Seen a couple people though. Oh, we've enjoyed listening to the wind through the trees. So we finished our Jenny Lake. Well, we didn't do the loop. We went up to the northernmost point-ish of Jenny Lake and we hiked back 
And it was four, four and a half miles there and back. Four and a half miles there and back. And we're back at the visitor center now. <laughs> That's called the pink house. <laughs> and that's called an outhouse. I'm not funny. Well, there it is. I'm sure it's better at sunrise than at sunset. Today, Kay and I are at the Snake River Brewing Company in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We've been here before, but it's been several years and we can't wait to get back. Here we go. Well, as you can tell, we decided not to do a flight this time. A lot of times we would, but we decided to go straight to what we were pretty sure we would like. So on my right, is the gravity check. This is a barley wine and it's what 12% ABV, low IBUs, about 20 IBUs. All right, so next up we have Paco's IPA. Um, and this one is 6.8% ABV, 65 IBUs. So uh, this is this is sort of a hop head brew, the description says what we're gonna go. Oh yes, lots of uh, lots of pop smells. Okay, you get I get a lot of hop flavor and some bitterness, a lot of hop aroma. That's a really great IPA because you get just enough bitterness to for it to be an IPA, but plenty of flavor and aroma. I guess I already said that. So we're getting it set up. We're gonna go up on one of those. Matt was nice enough to uh, give this to me as a birthday and Christmas present. I've been wanting to go up on a hot air balloon for a really long time and this seemed like the perfect location. I'm very excited. All right, what do you think of the trail, Matt? Well, I think this is really a must-do trail if you're in the area. There's a few reasons for that. First of all, it's fairly easy. It's, uh, I mean, there's, I mean, it's a trail. Uh, it's not handicap accessible by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it is relatively easy. Lots of flats, a few ups and downs here and there. Um, another thing that's great about this trail is the views. And we've already shown you some, but we're back at this point here, so here's another view for you. This is another one of those things that is so wonderful about this trail. It's like this the whole way on your right, the whole way, or your left, the whole way, regardless of, you know, depending on your direction. Um, uh, another thing, because of the way they do the parking at uh, the Rockefeller uh, Interpretive Center, or whatever the thing's called, mm -hmm. um, they limit it. So there are rangers there limiting the number of parking. So there's always going to be a maximum upper bound on the trail limited by the size of the parking lot which is roughly 50 vehicles so mm -hmm. we've seen people but it hasn't been slammed it's just been enough to know hey i'm near civilization there's people here well but it's not crazy like any trail anytime we get out on a trail that's longer than a mile or too long you and it's a loop um you go out you know three quarters of a mile one way on the loop you see plenty of people and then you get past that and you might see two. We saw more wildflowers than people and I couldn't yeah. say that about yesterday's trail here at Jenny Lake so um, this has been a fantastic trail and I highly recommend it. And yeah. the distance is perfect too because right yeah. now we're about six miles. I think when we get done mm -hmm. we'll probably clock in at seven. We are in morning of I don't even know what day we're on anymore. Saturday. It's Saturday. So we've been at this for a week now. And we're in Grand Teton National Park. We're headed up to one of our favorite places. 
in the park. It's got a great overlook. Um, and we're driving. It's not necessarily a hike and no, well, it's a walk up to the summit of Signal Mountain, but mostly a drive first. You could hike it and I have seen at least one video of people hiking it. Um, but for our morning when we want to eat breakfast, this drive is just fine. So we'll show you some really great views of the Tetons here in just a few minutes. This is the Jackson Lake Overlook. And it's usually where we get our best views of the Tetons. Until where the storm starts. First pull out from the south entrance is Moose Falls. And we're gonna go take a look. Not a bad first look at the park. This is the Lewis River. This is Lewis Falls. You will not be all by yourself here, obviously. The parking lot was very full, but it's very pretty. Say hi, Matt. Hello. Lewis Lake and when we stopped at the falls that was the very edge of the caldera so we're on the inside of the very large volcano now that is Yellowstone Park or sitting or that Yellowstone Park sits on top of I guess I should say right West Thumb Geyser Basin is one of the southernmost geothermal areas and you'll notice these boardwalks and you're supposed to stay on them because the ground could be really thin and you could accidentally find a uh, steam vent or something that could burn you by a lot. The West Thumb Geyser Basin is one of the first thermal areas you'll encounter if you enter the park from the south. We find this area especially wonderful because it combines the beauty of Yellowstone Lake with the energy of geysers and thermal pools. Once we got our campsite set up at Madison Campground, we decided to drive north for a little bit this afternoon and we have stopped at Terrace Spring. We're gonna show you around there a little bit, but um, the parking lot is uh, not so full. Yay. So our second stop after setting up camp is North Geyser Basin. Very crowded here. Um, we were gonna go see Artist Paint Pots, but it was, the parking lot was slammed, couldn't even get in. So, um, this is our happy backup plan. And we're gonna go see some geysers. spring and if you've seen our Christmas at Yellowstone video this was one and it was filled with snow everywhere except for just at the spring so 
So this is Steamboat Geyser. And I don't remember it doing any of this the last time we were here. We walked through the museum area and there's this overlook. And we're going to head on the Porcelain Basin Trail now. Down into the hot springs and such. Into the Porcelain Basin. Into the Porcelain Basin. Porcelain Basin is so named because the milky color of the mineral deposits have a color similar to porcelain. This area changes frequently as heavy mineral deposits seal off one geyser or hot spring, causing pressurized water to create a new thermal feature close by. At 7 o'clock in the morning you get empty parking lots. And we are at Fountain Paint Pots. First stop of our first full morning in Yellowstone. The Fountain Paint Pot is a bubbly cocktail composed of clay minerals, silica, acid, and water. In the spring, paint pots are typically quite thin and they thicken as summer progresses and water evaporates. Second stop of the first full day in Yellowstone is Midway Geyser Basin. So we're going to go up and see the largest hot spring in the U.S. It's called Grand Prismatic. If you are interested in a video on Grand Prismatic Hot Springs, please click the link in the upper right hand part of your screen. Here's your first view. Wow. Our hike for the day is to Mystic Falls, which is right there on the map. And we are at Biscuit Basin. So tonight we are at Artist Paint Pots. It is Sunday night and it's about 8.20. Yesterday at about 3.30, we tried to come see this, couldn't even get in the parking lot. So if you, as you can see, parking lot's fairly empty-ish now and we can go see them. So come on along. The concoction we found at the end of this trail was a classic example of thick, bubbling paint pots. This is Hayden Valley. Lake Yellowstone. Continental Divide at Isla Lake and I've always thought, maybe I'm wrong, that the lake on this side of the road flows that direction and the lake on that side of the road flows that direction. Probably I'm wrong. So I was right. And this water is flowing into the Gulf of Mexico. The crowds present during an Old Faithful eruption can be huge and annoying. On this occasion, 
we watched the eruption from the boardwalk to get a different, less crowded perspective. Guys, I'm really, really excited. I've got to tell you, we have guests. You've got to be excited. Are you excited? Because if you're not excited, you should be. Okay, get excited. Here we go. Here they are. It's Mark and Chelsea Mark. from Mark and Chelsea's <laughs> Adventures. We will have their link below. You definitely have to check them out. If you don't, you're in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the top of Old Faithful. And this is amazing. This is my best flagpole in quite a while, guys. Part two of the campsite beer review is in the truck. We just got back from dinner and we're in the midst of a bit of a mountain storm right now. Although, I don't know, it's not so bad right now, but at any rate, we're gonna do the Incline Imperial IPA in the truck here. And uh, don't worry, we're not driving anywhere. We're stationary, we're at a campsite, we're just staying dry. That you only see here. What does your beer look like, Matt? It looks like beer. Yes. And this is in our Stanley insulated beer cup for camping and beering. Okay, for camping and beering. That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. Our third beer. It's mine. It's Moose Drool from um, Big Sky. It's a brown ale from Big Sky Brewing Company in Missoula, Montana. It's a brown ale for me. It is morning of day four. lower falls of the Yellowstone are well worth the short walks you'll need to take to access their major viewing points. You can get up close and personal with a powerful natural force on the planet. So behind me is Tower Falls. You can see the towers. Oh, that's kind of up and down. Oh. Oh, okay, and that's why they call it Tower Falls. It's beautiful. Good morning and welcome to Foggy Yellowstone. We're hoping that it's burning off quickly so that you'll be able to see Artist Point momentarily. This is the landing here at Artist Point. This way first. We're the only ones here. <laughs> yeah, being here at 7 is pretty much amazing. We left the canyon area and drove in through the tower area. They're doing construction, so we couldn't stop much there. We have turned left and are headed towards Mammoth Hot Springs area. Um, but on the way, one of the first stops is a petrified tree. So we're gonna go take a look. There it is. It's a petrified tree. With a fence around it, because people couldn't leave it alone. This stop is called Floating Island Lake. We've decided to take Blacktail Butte Plateau, sorry, Blacktail Plateau Road. It's gravel and it's a six mile one way road. We've never been on it, so we're just gonna go exploring.
this one-way gravel road proved to be a fun little side trip. We took pictures and enjoyed the path less traveled in a very busy national park. Another stop before we get into Mammoth Hot Springs is Undyne Falls. It's just a little parking area and a viewing spot. We're going to take a look. If you're going to come to Mammoth Hot Springs or Yellowstone or any national park in the middle of summer, please pack your patience. People don't know how to drive. And they also don't know how to walk. Um, and there are lines everywhere and no place to park. Since there was no parking at Mammoth Hot Springs, we decided to drive north to the Roosevelt Arch. We also visited the Yellowstone Forever Institute. Mammoth Hot Springs is the park headquarters for Yellowstone National Park. It's also the location of historic Fort Yellowstone. The visitor center is newly remodeled and we're gonna go in and see what updates they've made. A trip to the Albright Visitor Center should be on your list when you come to the Mammoth Hot Springs area. The newly remodeled educational center can help you make the most of your visit, addressing not only things to do, but also informing you about safety rules, like staying on boardwalks and not approaching animals. This is our last full day in Yellowstone, and we are leaving Mammoth Hot Springs area early this morning to head out to Lamar Valley for some wildlife watching. So hopefully we'll get to see some animals and show you what we see along the way. We are here at one of our favorite hikes in Yellowstone. It's to Trout Lake. It's a really pretty lake just off of Highway 212, I believe. It's the one to the northeast entrance. So this is the Trout Lake we remember. It's pretty and calm. Like come here. It's a great place for a picnic. So there's a lake that way. And it's called Buck Lake. And we've been there with the Yellowstone Association or Yellowstone Forever now and we're gonna try to go back um, but there's no trail map to get there so we might make it we might not we're gonna give it a shot here we go thanks for coming with us on this little hike to trout and buck lakes if you do decide to go the few extra steps to get over to Buck Lake, make sure you use Leave No Trace principles, which of course you should do that anyway. One of the places that is one of our must-dos when you're in Yellowstone National Park is the terraces at Mammoth Hot Springs. Yellowstone is a rapidly changing environment. Nowhere is this more obvious than at Mammoth Hot Springs. This inside-out cave looks very different every time we visit. In the spirit of road tripping, we have stopped at Grant Coors Ranch National Historic Site. It was random and we are happy that we are here. We stopped for lunch, had a picnic, and now we're going to explore a historic ranch, which is right back there. But the Cowboys, the type that they would have been drinking was Arbuckles, so it was the most common brand. It actually came already roasted, so all the Cowboys had to do was grind it up. And that was the cook's job. 
uh, he would grind up the coffee, but there was a nice little bribery tool that Arbuckle supplied him with. I don't think they meant that for that, but there's a peppermint stick inside of here. Hmm. And so if the cook, after a rough day, he's been up for, you know, 18 hours, gets up at three in the morning, makes three square meals a day, travels between 10 and 12 miles a day, he doesn't necessarily want to grind up five pounds of coffee. So you can say, all right, whoever grinds up the coffee for me, you can have the peppermint stick. Welcome to Glacier National Park. We are here on our first evening. And we're going to eat dinner at the Lake McDonald Lodge. It's Saturday and it's first full day in Glacier National Park and we are headed up going to the Sun Road. Going to the Sun Road is absolutely stunning. However, it is also a challenge to drive. There are steep drop-offs on one side and a jagged mountain wall on the other. It was definitely a test of driving skill. All of the uh, pillars here are Douglas fir trees and they still have the bark on them. Really very interesting and grand. Well, it's our final morning in Glacier National Park and we've had an amazing time. It's a beautiful park and there's so much to see. And we did a couple of great hikes here. We did a four miler and a six miler and saw some beautiful waterfalls and glacial lakes and oh, just amazing. It's just amazing. The whole mountains are beautiful and everything. So. I realized it's more of a hiker's park to get out and see things you really uh, I mean, all parks are about hiking to a greater or lesser extent, but this one really is focused on hiking more than we realized. So when we come back, we're going to make a much more rigorous hiking schedule and plan our visit accordingly. Yeah. This was this first trip was just sort of the overview. Get the overview. Yeah, exactly. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Happy Trails Hiking. This week for Thirsty Thursday, we are going to Lockhorn Cider House. It's for me. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, they're just really crisp, clean cider tastes, I would right, say. So I'm gonna I guess pan back down here. If I were to rate them, this the peach is my favorite. Um, and I think I really want to try that raspberry without without the mm -hmm. habanero, without the habanero, but yeah. So the one on the far right, I thought was kind of the most cider tasting. Your right or ours? My right, your far left. This one. For viewers, it's the one on your far right. That's the Peach Barrel Reserve. The Peach Barrel Reserve, which is a reserve. Okay, to me that tasted the most like a cider, like quote what you'd get out of what, a can in the what store. What we would get out of a can, yes, I would agree. I and thought then, the most interesting was the raspberry, which is the reddish hue. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think so too. I, I, I like them. And um, I'll and have. They, they do have that sweet, the the one that's got some sugar in it from this one. The semi sweet, the semi sweet, bone dry, yeah. So, um, yeah, this is a good stop in Bozeman, though. 
Yeah, good place to stop. Good suggestion, Lauren. Stay tuned while we check out Devil's Tower, the nation's first national monument. It is a gloomy day here in South Dakota, but we are going to check out Badlands National Park. Anyway, join us for a tour. If you've been following us for a while, you'll know that Badlands National Park was one of our, well, it was our very first vacation as a family. And this is um, nostalgia, if nothing else. We've been here before and we're just excited to go look at it again. And basically, we made Matt stop. <laughs> we got a long drive, so it'll be a quick trip. This is the fossil preparation lab. Badlands National Park and the Visitor Center. So you see where all those cars are down there? It's because there's some bighorn sheep. We're going to zoom in and get them. We had such a great time on our Rockies road trip adventure in July of 2018. We hope you gained some travel tips for your next visit to the Rockies, too. Until next time, this is Kay and Matt from Happy Trails Hiking. Thanks for watching.